You watch it speak for yourself, Marcel Swally, Emmanuel Acho, my dog. Let's get back to our big story of the day, Dak Prescott. And the Cowboys star is out for the season after having ankle surgery. Dak was playing under the franchise tag for just over $31 million after he reportedly declined a five-year deal last offseason. Cowboys have options. They can either sign him to another franchise tag next offseason for nearly $38 million or sign him to a long-term deal, although Dak is expected to be out four to six months. So, Acho, does Dak have any leverage with the Cowboys? I love this topic. Uh, the do. short answer is no. The long answer is no. <laughs> um, I love this topic because two, what I would call intelligent people, can vehemently disagree and think they are so right. Let me start with my side. Um, yep. Dak, Dak doesn't have leverage because the, the operative word you used is options. Options dictate your leverage. When you were reading that prompt, you said that the Cowboys have options. Mm. The Cowboys can franchise tag Dak. The Cowboys can offer Dak a long-term deal. The Cowboys can offer Dak a short-term deal. The Cowboys have options. The Cowboys own the rights to Dak Prescott as it stands right now. Dak Prescott does not have meaningful options. What I mean? <clears throat> mm. Dak Prescott, sure, he could test the market. But the market is not going to look like what he wants it for him to, what he wants for it to look like. Oh, yeah. Remember Marcellus, that movie Hall Pass? I don't, I'm sorry. Hall Pass, dudes are married, and their wives give them a couple days off to, oh, y'all want to go find some chicks? Sure, we'll give you a Hall Pass. Only a couple days? Only a couple days. They had to think, I think it was a weekend. Ooh, I haven't seen the movie in a while. Eight seconds, baby. Yeah, everybody's not Marcellus' wife. <laughs> Here's the problem, though, Marcellus. What? As the course of the movie, they realize ain't no other women checking for them but they wives. And so although they got a uh, hall pass, uh, they realized uh, they didn't have any meaningful options, mm, even though they had freedom. Mm, the problem, Marcellus, with Dak Prescott, he's not going to have meaningful options. Sure, uh, you can look at it and you can say the Jets, the Colts, the Bears, and either the Giants, Falcons, or Lions, one of those three teams will be quarterbacks, along mm, with the Jets, Colts, Bears. Mm, That's about four teams. The draft is going to have, like every other draft, about three top 15 quarterbacks. We know for sure Trevor Lawrence. We know for sure Justin Fields. Mm -hmm. So it's going to be a game of musical chairs. Where does Dak fit in? The problem is Dak is not going to go find big money anywhere. So first lap, although I'm coming with some body blows, sir, please know Dak does not have meaningful options. Mm. Therefore, Dak does not have leverage. Ah. Uh. Meaningful options. I, I completely disagree with you. I think you already stated that. This injury has no impact on the negotiations. To stay laserly focused on that, because next year he's going to have the same options he would have had without the injury. Next year, you're at the same position. $37 million tag or let him walk. He had that option with the injury or without the injury. We agree on that. Okay. Now, if I'm Dak Prescott, I'm like, so are they going to let me walk? According to Stephen Jones, hell no. According to Jerry Jones, hell no. All you can do is try to poke at, well, they said that for other players. But I'm Dak Prescott. My negotiation is not those other players. So we have different ammunition. The only thing that will enter into this room if you leave the door cracked open and a little draft try to sneak through under the door is, hey, Dak, you got hurt and people are not going to think of you the same. Oh, and then you realize, yes, they will. Because all the doctors have come out, including the team doctors, have said, we expect him to return fully from mm -hmm. this injury. And we've seen other players, I keep giving you Darren Sproles, others. We've seen players return from worse injuries, Teddy Bridgewater, and find his way back to getting some money, not Dak-level money. But point being, Dak Prescott, if he looks at his negotiations, nothing's changed except the emotional impact you have in that moment because you're like, oh, man, I'll mess my money up. You know why I'm talking with such confidence? Because I don't want to hear about everybody else. Because options come with availability. Who else is out there? Mm -hmm. You know why I talk with such confidence? Because this happened to me. In my contract year, I had a back surgery, which is ankle surgery, back surgery, uh, Teddy Bridgewater knee injury. We're all kind of in the same boat trying to figure out who has worse in terms of severity. But I was looked at at a moment like, oh, man, he done messed up his contract year. No, I didn't. <laughs> I was able to still have the same negotiation. You know why? Going forward, when you pay somebody that amount of money, it's a projection, and it is a macro conversation. Mm -hmm. I think you're a little too deep in the weeds to realize Dax already put up third most wins since he's been in the league. Dax already had, what, fifth all-time passer rating. Like, Dax put enough in his, in his ammunition where... 
You can't take that away because of the injury that you're going to return from. I like your point, and the reason I like your point is because you're speaking like Dax agent. You're speaking on the pro Dax France side. In the building. But you know better than I know, because you've sat in these rooms, I've only heard about these rooms and listened to these rooms about, <laughs> when you're in a, a big-time contract negotiation, yeah, not yeah. like one I may have been in, but a real contract negotiation, the team's not going to tell you what you have done. Yeah, yeah. They're going to tell you what you haven't. Right. And that is where Dak Prescott is going to fall short. Because here's what Jerry Jones is going to do. If you're Todd Franz, Dak Prescott's agent, then I'll be Jerry Jones. Let's go. You inherited an uberly talented roster, probably the best roster in the National Football League, the best offensive line in 2016. Everybody was healthy at the time. A first-round running back we gave you. We gave you Des Bryant, all-time uh, touchdown reception leader in Cowboys history. We gave you a Hall of Fame tight end in Jason Witten. We gave you a tremendous slot receiver in Cole Beasley. We actually gave you competent defensive backs as well. Oh, and you had a healthy Sean Lee. So you had a great defense, and you had, you had a great defense by Cowboy standards. Statistically, I think they were top 10, top 12. And you had a great offense by anyone's standards. Okay. You got a first-round bye. And yet, you only had to win one game to get to the NFC Championship, and we lost. Okay, what happened in 2017? You okay. didn't make the playoffs. Okay, what happened in 2018? You won a game, but you still didn't make the NFC Championship in the playoffs. Okay, what happened in 2019? You went 8-8, eight and eight, you didn't make the playoffs, you lost to the, the Eagles when all you had to do was beat them. Okay, what happened in 2020? You were 1-3, and, and you were leading the Giants before you got hurt. Okay, but the defense sucks, right? It's not Dak's fault, but weak Two against the Falcons, the score is 0-0. Zero to zero. You, you turn the ball over, Dak, and the Falcons go up 7-0. to zero. Week three against the Seahawks, the score is 23-15. to 15. You turn the ball over, Dak, and the Seahawks go up 31-15. to 15. Week four against the Browns, the score is 14-14. You turn the ball over, Dak, and the Browns go up 21-14. Week five against the Giants, you turn the ball over, and the Giants go up 14-3 to three when the score is 7-3. to three. Oh. Dak, you are not without blame. Oh. That is what Jerry Jones is going to say. So while you, Marcellus, can tell me all the reasons Dak has leverage and deserves money, oh. I can very easily tell you all the reasons he doesn't. Oh, uh, I love your recall. Horrible argument, but great recall. Um, Jerry Jones knows more about this situation than you the, or I. Correct, absolutely. The greatest recall, Jerry Jones. <laughs> But he's still talking post-surgery about Dax, our leader. Dax intangibles, as I highlight, uh, people were saying around the league, including Jerry Jones, look, you don't have to be Patrick Mahomes, Russell Wilson, Aaron Rodgers on the field, but you know who you are? Off the field, you're equal to them in intangibles and not too far behind them on the field. So let's talk about this, because we're getting into a room where when you have a major contract negotiation, you don't bring the team with you because a lot of players hide behind their team. Hey, pay me. Why? We won the Super Bowl. Hey, chill out, big dog. What did you do? And let's now extract what Dak Prescott has done in those situations. You want to bring up the fact that one year he loses to Aaron Rodgers? Oh, that's not going to hurt you in negotiations. One year you beat Russell Wilson in the playoffs. I think that helps. And then the next year, you lose to a Rams team, even though Zeke goes 20 or 47, and the defense looks bad. Um, and that's the team that's in the Super Bowl that year. I don't see anything where it's hurting Dak Prescott. What I'm seeing is a Jerry Jones who's already offered Dak Prescott $175 million, five years, $35 million, 110 guaranteed, and said, will you take this? And Dak said, no thanks. Mm -hmm. And then that same Dak who smacked that contract down has looked even better and will return to the same form. So you have not showed me impact on negotiation. I don't bring the team into this room. Uh, I bring Dak Prescott but, and his resume. But the problem is, and, and this is where I think your, your answer is limited. Oh, the problem is limited. you can't just bring me a bunch of individual statistics oh, in, I can't? in regards to a team game, in regards to a quarterback. Okay. Dak Prescott's okay. not a defensive end. He's surely not a linebacker. Okay. His negotiations will be vastly different than what yours look like. Um, you can't do that. The other problem here is this. You're ready. Jerry Jones says and Stephen Jones, I'm not going to let him walk. And in all honesty, they are telling their truth at the moment. <laughs> right now, on, on October 11th, or whenever Dak got hurt, tragically, they said they're not going to let him walk. And you know what? In theory, they can be right. If Jerry Jones says, you know what, Dak, we'll give you a five-year, $25 million a year deal. Walk. Sure, but at least Jerry's going to say, ah, you know, we tried to keep him, but we, but it, we just couldn't make it work. Mm -hmm. We just couldn't make it work. Jerry Jones also tried to tell us Jason Witten was going to be a cowboy forever. Tony Romo, all these other things. But None the of them are Dak, but, but keep the, going. But the fact of the matter is, Dak is Dak until he's not. Mm -hmm. Des Bryant was Des Bryant. I'm never going to play for nobody before the cow besides the Cowboys. I got bookmarked tweets of people saying Des will never play for anybody else besides the Cowboys. 
until he's until he's not mm -hmm. until he's working out for the Saints and everybody else. Tony Romo, oh, well, he's never gonna get benched for Dak Prescott until he does. Yeah. The fact is, Dak is Dak Marcellus until he is not. And the problem is, we're at that impasse. We're at the impasse. It's not now. an impasse. It's not an impasse. You you continue to use negotiations as they're limited to just the Cowboys. When you don't, when you talk leverage, you use everything against the Cowboys. You keep taking away Dak's ammunition, but giving Which Jerry all of his. Which is what? Which is like, hey, bruh, there are 31 other teams out there, and how many need quarterbacks? Let's About say four. 10. Oh. Uh, well, look, all right, say four. I go with you. I don't Please, need to argue you. over numbers. Thank you. All I need is one. But that matters. No, oh, no, it doesn't. All you need is one that's going to say, let's push this up, and you compete with those mm -hmm. I've been there. Here's the thing. Quarterbacks also get to extract themselves from the team. You know why? As I continue to tell you, and I think you finally fact-checked, who's made the most money in NFL history today? You Drew tell Brees. me. You tell you me. You want to see it right here? Drew Brees, $269 million. Uh, and counting while Eli and Peyton, I mean, Eli and Peyton are stuck at 252. Stuck. At 252. <laughs> they ain't playing no more. But Drew Brees this year leapfrogged them. Here's the thing Drew Brees, most money in NFL history. Kirk Cousins, most money since Dak has been a quarterback in the NFL. Kirk Cousins walked into Minnesota's meeting room mm -hmm. or the organization where the capologist, the owner, the GM were sitting there and said, with a losing record in Washington, make me on pace to be the highest quarterback paid. And he actually accomplished that. Mm -hmm. You, whether you DN like me, or whether you are Kirk Cousins, a losing quarterback, can still get the most money. And Dak Prescott sits there with a much more impressive resume. Dak Prescott is third in, all, in wins since he's been in the league. So Dak Prescott has leverage over the guy who's making the most money right now. And it, Drew Brees at the time was not Drew Brees of today. So there's Here, nothing stopping Dak from getting his money. I hear my two issues with your, your leverage okay, argument. Let's my go, two go. issues with this. Let's go. He does not have imminent leverage. What do I mean? Kirk Cousins, really? when he got tagged, 8-7-1. and one. I believe that was his record the year he got tagged. Then he played again under the tag, 8-8, eight and eight, somewhere between 7 and 9 wins. Dak Prescott has won 7 out of his last 18 games. Mm -hmm. 7 wins, 11 losses. Dak Prescott, 1-3 this year. Dak Prescott, 45% of his yards came when trailing by double digits. So, yes, you can talk about what Dak did in 2016, 17, and 18, but when he gets to that bartering and bargaining table, it's not the, the teams aren't going to be beckoning over or, or begging over a guy what he did in 2016, 17. But let me get to your Breeze point, because you bring that up a lot. You say all it takes is one team. That is correct. But what happened with Drew Brees that year when he got hurt with the shoulder? The Dolphins, they were the team that was interested. Nick Saban was the head coach at the time. But the Dolphins team doctors, contrary to the Saints team doctors, said, you know what? Brees won't be the same. Mm -hmm. You were saying, Wrong. I am saying Wrong. that Dak will be the same. But all it takes is a couple team doctors to say Dak won't be the same. Surely the Cowboys team doctors are going to say he is. What do you expect them to say? But they have to say he's going to be the same. You're not making an argument for yourself. No, the argument all it takes is a couple of doctors to say he will be the same. No, the argument is this. And that's the team that's the concerned. Ar the argument is this. We if don't Dak, need everybody. If, if Dak Prescott has a team out there, has two teams out there, if one or two of them knock him because of his injury, there goes that leverage. Really? It didn't go for Drew Brees, but I don't even want to get it. It did go for it, Drew Brees. It did not go. He got signed. He became the highest paid. The 12th paid highest paid. At that time, but guess what? This is the whole play. You keep moving it. I don't need the world to love me. I just need one. And then maybe a second to drive the price up. But Dak already has that. He has more leverage than a Kirk Cousins, who was, what, 15, 16, and 1 in those two franchise years. That's still a losing record. Point being, when you walk into high leverage negotiations, they are going to use the trump card of your stats over your wins, even at quarterback. Because if not, I'm not bringing the whole team with me. So I don't care 13 and 3, whether it was your, your engine, Zeke was the engine, defense was the engine. I'm signing you. When they sign a contract, especially a big one like that, it's only two names on there, brother, the owner and yours. Uh, you can hide behind big programs. It happens in college a lot. Even in the pros, guys hide behind team success. But they're signing you. And if they're signing Dak Prescott, <laughs> oh, my God, the leverage that he has and the ammunition he has has not changed. Coming up, Russell Wilson is cooking defenses and is the MVP frontrunner, but we'll tell you if he's already an all-time great. Next, speak for yourself.